After the roar of water, quiet desolation. This young Indonesian man sifts through photos of family members buried under the rubble of their home, while another recites the names of three lost relatives. Amasgiri. They are Amasgiri, Bayele, Arasuchi, he says. Torrents of mud and debris smashed into dozens of remote villages dotted throughout these mountainous islands in Indonesia's far west, forcing thousands to flee. Our house is in the mountains. We had to dismantle the roof. We went out through the back door and pulled ourselves out with a rope. Now the long, hard recovery begins. At least 130 Indonesians have lost their lives, but more bodies are still being pulled out of the mud. In nearby Timor-Leste, just to Australia's north, the death toll has passed 30. But the devastation is more widespread, and locals are now worrying about disease, as well as shortages of food and clean water. We cannot go to the war. We don't have enough money. Yeah, we don't have enough food. That's because the floods also forced thousands in the capital, Dili, to cram into refuges, breaking a citywide COVID-19 lockdown and stoking fears the pandemic will now rip through the city. People are extremely vulnerable and it's a really serious situation. Officials in Canberra and Darwin are also worried, making it clear Australia is poised to answer any calls for help. We stand ready and willing and able to assist um, when they know what it is that they will need. That call may come sooner rather than later. Stephen Jedgetts, ABC News.